in reality, uh, a lot of people end up writing a track, they end up just in a, in a loop like this. So you come back to the computer, you start the sequencer and you go back to playing in this loop, whatever it is that you've been writing. And you can keep adding to it quite easily. You just add another track and add more elements until it's completely full and, and maybe driving and so on. But the, the trick of getting from this stage of writing just a loop into writing a, a complete track, that can be a little bit tricky. That's uh, one of the things I want to address here. So if you know where you're going, then the simplest way of getting out of a loop is to simply uh, copy the, the loop across. Well, we said this was an intro, so this is the main driving part. Basically, you're just copying and pasting the, the parts across throughout the track. First of all, without any regard to the um, form, basically, uh, of what's playing where. So we're just copying everything to every position, basically. That not, this not, and let's, okay, so th this is the quickest way of getting out of loop is basically just copying the parts that you have to the new positions to lay out the track. So now we have uh, six, seven minutes. So now we have basically taken, taken the loop that we, we were writing in, and we've now brutally created an overview of a track. And so now the, the thing is to go and, and weed out what we don't want to create some kind of buildup. Because when you were writing in that loop, you probably got to a point where you added so many elements that the energy was at the maximum. And then you can't really go anywhere else. All you can do is begin to bring parts out again. What you're doing when you're writing in a loop like that is you're basically writing this part of the track. You're writing the climax of the track. It will be this part here, the, the, the peak of the track with the most elements playing with the highest energy. If you're just writing in a loop for days, months, whatever it is, then this is the part you've been writing the whole time. So once you realize that, you can begin to extract then the simpler parts because these are actually uh, buildups. This is all just a buildup towards this point. So you've started off here and now you have to work kind of backwards, basically. So what we're going to do is we would say that this part is probably complete. You've, it's got everything playing and maybe even we might be able to take out one or two things but the rest of it is going to be a buildup. So you're going to start then just muting or deleting parts until you figure out which ones should be playing um, to build up to that, that point. So it's just trial and error. It depends on the track. You might know that some of these elements have to be playing completely through. It's integral to the rhythm and so on. For example, from the Tcon one, uh, they're adding a percussion part here after eight bars. So you could say, okay, I'm going to copy that idea and I'm going to add my percussion part here after eight bars. So that, you know, that's a formula that they've done there. Then they've added another percussion part in the second section. So this one here, let's say. Now, what this is, this exact percussion part, it doesn't really matter. This could be a 16th note hi-hat pattern. It could be an off-hat, whatever it is. You can, it, it, it may not correspond one-to-one -to, -one to your track. It doesn't really matter. It's just the form we're looking at generally here. And you can experiment. So it's just a formula, basically. Like they're using, they're just adding elements here uh, to get to this, um, to, this, to this peak. What else have they got? They're adding, uh, they're adding a synth part here in the third section. So this is the third section here. So they have one synth part. So in your track, Maybe this one is, uh, is suitable and maybe it's suitable to play into the breakdown like, like they've done, just copying that idea. Uh, maybe that one's not suitable for that purpose. Maybe this one is and so on. So it's just kind of trial and error and figuring out like uh, what's comparable in your track to the one that you're analyzing or the one you're using as a basis. It makes a lot of sense to, to pick a track as a, as a basis, as a template, which fits the style that you're actually writing in or the style that you want to be able to write in. So the elements then might correspond more easily. It might be quicker to find out what is actually going to work and what is not going to work. But you'll find that if you copy the, the form of a, of a commercial track, which is good, suddenly the thing will just kind of work. It'll actually work. Even if you're not listening like this, you're just 
you're just doing painting by numbers and you're just kind of uh, copying the ideas and so on, you'll find that when you play it back, it'll probably just work, you know, in some form. It'll work better than uh, just playing the loop, certainly. Let me see what else I can do here. So they're adding something in the second part of that breakdown, which wasn't there before. So I'll say that's probably those parts, maybe. Just looking at those, those synth parts there. I don't know if they're adding anything, but it's definitely becoming more driving and louder. So I'm just going to be blunt and say, okay, there's, they're adding another synth part there. Okay, so then it breaks down for uh, eight bars. So you can kind of get, get a rough idea. Something like that. We've got one, one section in the middle there. It's, it's just a matter of, of figuring out then how you can, what, the, what you can get from the, the other person's uh, arrangement, basically, because this is what composers are doing since hundreds of years. You're kind of borrowing the arrangement from someone else, like to get started, to get to know what you're doing. Just listening to music, unless you're actually a band, in a band as, as a musician, just listening to music, you're not going to be able to know how long each section is and uh, how it's arranged. Basically, we've taken our, our loop, which is the climax, which is uh, this part, um, which is here. Everything is playing at, at, at one time. Just, just this one section here. For now, it's just for 16, no, 12 bars, in fact. So we've taken the section which we've been, say, writing in as a loop, which is the climax. And we've been listening in that section for so long that we really don't know how to go forward with it. So now we're working backwards. We have that section with everything playing. It's only 12 bars long. And then the rest of the track is a build up towards that. Now we have taken our loop and we've created something which has an actual form. And we can, we can try and play it back, you know, from just from the beginning or whatever listen through, figure out what's, what's working, what's not working. Uh, but at least then you have a, a basis. You have something which is the right length, has the right length of sections, can be mixed by DJ because there is a breakdown in the right place. And it has the form of the style that you're trying to write in. So now instead of listening to one loop over and over again, you can actually go and listen to the whole track over and over again. Maybe not in its entirety every time, but basically that's the idea that you have now a, an actual uh, arrangement, a basic arrangement with which to start. After this, then you start to do the automation. Maybe you might have automation curves, which uh, spread over several um, sections to try to link things together. You'll have synth parts like this, which spread over several sections, which kind of try to get out of these abrupt changes. So little parts that start in one part, uh, one section like here, and then continue on into another to kind of try to mesh and um, dovetail uh, each of these um, blocks uh, into the other so that to the listener, you know, they don't want to hear just these big choppy changes all the time. There should be some kind of flow between it. I would call that subtractive writing. What works for you, it doesn't, it's up to you. Just try different methods, try experimenting, try writing from left to right. If you have a vision, have you have an idea of what you want to do exactly and you know where you're going, just writing from left to right can work. That was just a guide. So that's not actually necessary, that track. So then we have, you know, this is a basic, basic overview. This is the right length. We've got a, an intro, about a minute, and then the whole thing is about seven minutes minus this 30 seconds, so six and a half minutes. So, you know, in, in a few minutes, we've been able to arrange this track without even listening to it. And of course, you don't have to stick to the, um, to the template that you've been, that you're using. Let's say you're, you, you take one track as a basis. This is just, uh, this worked for them. I mean, this worked for these guys when they were writing the track and they had certain elements, which they found maybe worked here as a 32 bar breakdown maybe those elements didn't you know in your track it might not work as a 32 bar breakdown it might only work as 16 bars and then it becomes extremely repetitive or it's a melody and you don't want to repeat the melody uh, or something like this so maybe for you 16 bars or 24 bars works in your track so you don't have to stick to this i mean this is just used as a very general basis to get out of the loop just to get some kind of form of a track so that you can get out of just getting stuck in this loop the whole time. So don't stick to the uh, to these uh, analysis 
exactly. Use it as a basis, but you don't have to stick to it religiously. Don't make your track fit this if it makes your track worse. There's, there's no point. Um, it's just using it as a basis. So if you decide that, well, actually, I don't want this percussion to come in or something to come in here because it ruins my track, then, then don't do that. If you analyze several tracks from the same artist, you'll begin to understand their form, their formula, basically. They'll have the very similar length of intro. They'll have very similar buildups. They'll have very similar length of breakdown and very similar methods to get to this climax and then uh, just get out of it again. It, may, it makes sense to analyze uh, tracks from artists in the style that you want to write in, uh, because once you do one or two, you'll begin to realize that, oh, okay, it's kind of formulaic. The tracks are laid out pretty much the same almost every time. So there's an advantage in that and that you don't have to experiment too much, but it can, it can sound repetitive after a while eventually. So you can begin to experiment then once you get it down and you're able to write a track from left to right without actually having to think about it too much, then, you know, you can experiment quite a lot with your own forms. So that's it for the methods of arranging.